is up and fluffed out and ready to decorate. And I've already put up my cross stitch. I'm going to have to move some of these uh, cacti off the top of the fire for uh, the nativity scene. And if I spin around this way, I'll try to go fairly slowly-ish. I don't want people getting seasick. Ignore the garden. It's December after all, it's going to look tatty. And there we have my other frame. And sitting there waiting for me to finish getting out all the uh, decorations and get them up is the advent calendar that my stepmother has made me. So I don't know what's in that. So, uh, yeah, let's go and open day one. Okay, so she's giving me a box to put it in. So it's probably going to sit under the tree once the tree is decorated. And everything is wrapped up and numbered. That's day one there. And my stepmother is a crafter, so I suspect she's had as much fun putting this together as, as I will have opening it. And she said it was craft related, like the whole calendar. And but that's all I know. So let's rustle and number out. So that's some uh, Rikarumi yarn, it's a DK, it's uh, got a bit of a gradient going on there. Um, I've not used Rikarumi before so that'd be interesting. Okatex, so that's good. So for those of you that don't know about Okatex, it's eco-friendly. And this is 50 grams, oh that's tiny for 50 grams. That's very neatly wrapped up. But, uh, I don't think I'd ever be able to cake something up this neat and tidy at 50 grams. It'd be like this. But, uh, what's the fibre content? That's cotton. 100% so cotton. Spin spin. Rikurumi spin spin it says. DK 100% cotton. Uh, I guess... Farber means colourway. I think it's party. I think part, it says uh, Farber on one side and party on the other side on the label, like in the same line. So I think the colourway is called party. But yeah, very cute. So I shall put that to one side and work out what to do with it later. Do I have to take a break, Cleo? Do I have to take a break from decorating and drink my tea? With cat snuggles. Yeah? So there we go, there's the tree all uh, lit up and decked out. And the day one is done. Let's see what I get up to tomorrow. Okay, so uh, plans for today rather misty and foggy outside so uh, probably not going to be going anywhere. I do have a Morrison's delivery coming later on which is mostly cat food and ingredients for Christmas pudding Christmas cake plus topping up our snacks and dessert stash and uh, ordering the bits that I've got to order for the dinners for the next <laughs> week. <laughs> I tend to do like a two week shop um, for like main dinners and stuff but because the Christmas cake ingredients are quite pricey I didn't include them on that shop last week um, so I did a separate shop after we got paid for the end of November um, and uh, that's coming today so I'll be able to make the cake and what have you. I'll probably soak the fruit over the weekend and make the cake and the Christmas pudding next week to give the fruit enough time to soak. And we also did a bit of other shopping yesterday, um, mostly for my partner, because he's lacking in the wardrobe department. Um, but also, the phone that I'm using to record on is an iPhone 5 SE, so as you can imagine, it's fairly old. And it now refuses to stay switched on if it's not plugged into a power source. So I have to do everything attached to the wall, which is not ideal for a mobile phone. Um, 
I do have some long charge cables and what have you. Uh, so we have splashed out on a new phone because I've had this one so long and it is now just giving up the ghost. So I've gone for a new iPhone that will give me good video capability so that I don't then need to get at any point in the near future a separate camera for YouTube. Uh, so that's the thinking anyway. So that, that arrives today and uh, like I say most of the stuff we've ordered for delivery today is, is for my partner. Um, but I did also look at some yarn yesterday and I found the yarn to finish my big blanket, my Sophie's Universe. Wasn't sure I was going to manage that, so that's ordered. Uh, so that should come some point next week, postal strikes allowing. And I've also ordered some commercial yarn for my Norwegian Christmas sweater. So, uh, again, that's going to come next week, uh, postal strikes allowing. Um, I could, I suppose, wash some fabric that I've had arrive from Minerva last week, but I'm waiting on one more fabric. So I'm probably going to wait until that arrives and wash all three together. So I've got some jerseys and uh, it's a corduroy's on the way. Um, so that, that's later in the month, those are going to get worked on. Hopefully later in the month, I don't really want to be leaving them until January. Um, so yeah, so the plans for today. I've got to edit my Flax Light modification video to go up tomorrow. Um, I would normally have um, edited it a little, like yesterday. Um, but I haven't finished filming it, so um, so I finished that off this morning already, and uh, yeah, get that edited, get that uploaded, ready for you guys to see it tomorrow, um, and Christmas shopping, and birthday shopping. Um, I have three nieces; they're all sisters. Um, two of them are twins. Their birthday is the twenty third of December, so obviously they're going to get their birthday present sent out with their Christmas present. No, I do not do joint birthday Christmas presents. No, don't do that to your children. But, uh, my partner's birthday is the 30th of December and, and he had joint birthday Christmas presents and hated it. Don't do it. Um, I mean, I don't know why people would anyway. I've known people with birthdays on Boxing Day and that sort of thing as well and things getting shared and joint. And it's not fair. Give the kid their own birthday. But, uh, so yeah, so the twins are just before Christmas. And my niece, and my elder niece, uh, she turned 16 in October and because they don't live in this country, I wasn't organised enough to get present out to her in time for her birthday, um, which is a bit of an annual habit now. So she gets a birthday present sent out with the Christmas presents as well. Um, so that needs doing, theirs need, need picking and ordering uh, so they can get to their, their mailing service in time, I hope to get out for Christmas. I'm not totally convinced that I've managed that every year because it only goes once a week, but um, the UK based people that I get presents for, so my parents, my brother, my partner, um, I have a little bit more time for that, but obviously as I say, postal strikes. So I wanna get it all organized fairly early. So that's happening today, which won't be very exciting. We're spending a lot of time on the computer or uh, a tablet or something might show you little snippets but there's not going to be much for you to see. But, uh, by the time this comes up you'll have seen the video I'm going to edit today. Okay, and so uh, I'll either see you in a bit or I'll see you tomorrow. I don't know how the day's going to go but we'll see. Good morning, it's uh, the 3rd of December and I've not yet done my advent calendar or anything because I appear to be trapped under a cat. Um, so yeah, we'll see how I get on with that. Um, today's plans, I have fruit to soak for the Christmas pudding. I'll probably put the cake fruit in soak as well actually. May or may not get as far as doing the cake tomorrow, we'll see. Uh, and then I can make the pudding next week because the fruit will have had plenty of time to soak up all the sherry um, and 
a slow cooker meal to make today. So if I can find space in the kitchen to put you, I might show you bits and pieces of that, but um, our kitchen's not very big and it's got lots of stuff in it at the moment because we've just had a food delivery. But, uh, yeah, I've just got uh, the X Xbox on at the moment, playing Gems of War, um, whilst I'm trapped under the cat and drinking my coffee. But, uh, I'll show you my advent calendar once the cat releases me. Okay, so here's day three of the advent calendar. Um, I'm going to open this standing up because I'm breaking in some new boots. But, uh, this is that time of year where I start needing to wear boots. So Russell, Russell, Russell as normal. Ooh. So today we've got some minis. Some lovely minis. So this uh, nice sort of mm, see if I can get that to focus. Like the mode I'm using on the camera is maybe not going to do it, so uh, I'll show you a close-up of those in a moment. So I've got this neutral peachy, peachy brown and a uh, white. So these are knock-on yarn. They're 10 grams each. They're 25% nettle, 25% hemp and 50% cotton. And so hemp is related to the plant you get marijuana from, but it's not the same plant. Okay, so they're rather cute. Let me switch the uh, mode on the camera and see if I can get a clearer shot of these for you. There we go. You can see the colours a bit better now. So yeah, they're rather lovely. They can go with my uh, plant fibre yarns to go up into something at some point. Okay, welcome to my tiny and chaotic kitchen. I'm just going to weigh out the fruit for the pudding and the cake and put them in soak. Um, and then after that, I shall put the dinner on for the slow cooker. So you obviously see me make my Christmas pudding and my Christmas cake before. It's the same recipe. Um, I'm using sherry for my uh, Christmas pudding, which is what I generally use. You can use other alcohols as well. Um, typically for a Christmas cake, I'll use brandy, but you can use, again, other alcohols. Um, sherry would work well, port would work well, um, because it's a fruit-based cake. And if you are somebody who doesn't drink um, or doesn't want a particularly boozy cake, you can use tea. Um, when you cook alcohol, the alcohol content burns off, but with the cake you're going to be feeding it afterwards. So you're going to be feeding it with the same liquid that you've soaked the fruit in. So pick something you like. <laughs> um, and yeah, if, if somebody's on medication that doesn't agree with alcohol, or um, if you're baking for, some, for a teetotal person, then use tea instead of alcohol. So I'm going to get on with that. Um, I will probably speed it up or uh, put it on, uh, what's it called? Time lapse. <laughs> uh, I'll probably speed it up so I can do that in my editing software. Um, but yeah, same recipe. I've got it all written out in my, my recipe folder. And uh, yeah, after that we'll sort out dinner, get that going because that's going to take a good few hours to cook. And I'll uh, let you know what I'm cooking when I get to it. Okay, so that's the Christmas cake mix done. You've might have noticed I was using tea this time. We're going over to my dad's on Christmas Day, so I get to experiment with my recipes. So I'm trying it out with tea. I'll show you the tea that I'm using. Okay, I'm using this tea. 
It's a lemon tea, number 72, from Teaspoon Tea Company, which is an independent tea retailer near where I live. So that's what I'm trying. I usually use brandy and I usually soak the fruit for a few days. To, I may or may not get as far as baking tomorrow. It might be next week. We will see. I'm also going to cover this in a bit and let it just sit and soak. So, uh, the Christmas pudding, on the other hand, I'm sticking to uh, what I normally do, and I'm using sherry. So I'm not going to worry about rinsing out the tea, because lemon tea, it's going to taste fine in the tiny little trace. It's not going to be a problem. Okay, so for the Christmas cake, you need 150 millilitres of the liquid, of, of your choice. Well, at least for the recipe that I use, anyway. And for the Christmas pudding, you need 175 I'm using this rather lovely Amontillado Sherry, which is a medium dry. It's uh, just from the local supermarket. So it's, whilst it's more expensive than tea, it's uh, not that pricey. This was another reason for me using tea, actually. Brandy's expensive and uh, we had the sherry in stock. So it hasn't cost me anything this year. So, so yeah, let's measure out the 175 mils Oh, sherry. Oh, that's a nice sound. I don't know if the microphone would have picked that up. Okay, so 175 millilitres. Obviously, 175, not exactly measured off on my uh, measuring jug, so if it's a little bit over. about halfway between 150 and 200 mils. Probably slightly on the generous side, but that's fine. So for my recipe for the Christmas pudding, you need to leave the fruit to soak for at least a week. So um, I'm gonna put that liquid in, mix it through and put the lid on the box and leave it till at least next Saturday. Might leave it a bit longer, we'll see. Of course, the cat now thinks he's getting something. All right, so that's going to set to one side for a week, and I'll cover up the Christmas cake stuff, and uh, then I'll get the dinner sorted. Okay, so time to put the uh, dinner on set up. So we're using the slow cooker quite a bit now. Um, it's not a huge slow cooker, but it does for two of us. Um, although it's on for longer than if you're cooking in the oven, it uses less electricity. So that's really helpful. <laughs> and if you're a meat eater, you can do cheaper cuts of meat in it uh, more effectively than cooking them quickly. So that it'll soften it up more. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's good, also good for lentils and that sort of stuff as well. So really versatile, quite cheap to run. And it's meant we haven't had to invest in an air fryer to reduce our costs. Plus it's really good hearty wintry autumn food, which is nice. This is the recipe that I'm using. It is from online. I can't remember the name of the blogger, but it's from online with a couple of modifications. Uh, one is that we are using mixed herbs rather than the basil, because although I have got basil plants, they're not producing tons of leaves at the moment because of the time of year um, and we have that huge tub of herbs that we need to use so uh, so that's what we're doing um, there will be some leftover ingredients from this recipe the quantity that I do particularly the pasta sauce because you put a third of a cup of pasta sauce in it it's American recipe and um, so I will bag up the rest of the pasta sauce and stick it in the freezer this time around I might even remember to bag it up in the portions that I need all this recipe rather than whatever's left in the jar which is what I did last time. Um, I had to freeze my cream um, so that I could still, because obviously I get deliveries so the date was a bit too short for when I was planning on making this recipe so I froze the cream, took it out yesterday, let it defrost in the freezer. I'm not going to be able to refreeze it so whatever's left of this will have to get binned. It was a little bit more 
solid than it would have been new. So whereas the recipe says to beat the cornstarch or corn flour if you're British into the cream, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick it all in the pan and uh, whisk all together. Could you make the sauce first and then put in the chicken? And uh, I would imagine you could substitute tofu or whatever chicken substitute you use if you are not a meat eater. But I don't know because I am a meat eater. Vegetarians and vegans are very inventive with their cooking, so I'm sure you think of something. Yeah. So, I'm going to stick all the stuff for the sauce in the slow cooker, mix it all up, and add the chicken, and then it just uh, goes until it's ready, and we do some rice or some potatoes or something to go with it. Oh, incidentally, I freeze my garlic cloves. Um, so when I need them, I just take out how much I need. And if you've got a good enough garlic press, you can press them. But I managed to break my garlic press. It was a cheap one, trying to crush frozen garlic, to be warned. Um, you can, however, chop the clove whilst it's still frozen. You don't need to defrost them. You can just use them frozen. So there's a top tip for you particularly if you don't use garlic every, every day. No, Leo, it is not time. No. It's not lunchtime yet. I'm not too worried about the cornstarch not um, mixing through properly because of the length of time that this is going to be cooked for. It should all be fine. It is still not time. No. Leo tends to ask for his meals at least an hour and a half to two hours before it's time. Okay, so that's my sauce made. So it's pretty quick and easy. I've been uh, going for like six minutes so far. Now we're going to put in the chicken. Obviously, I'm going to wash my hands after this because the chicken. Um, you'll notice I've got this wrapped in cling film. Um, we buy things in larger packs of mini for one recipe where possible. Split it up and freeze what we don't need. Cover those in the sauce. And I'm going to pop the lid on. And that is going to cook for at least three to five hours on low. But, uh, yeah, we just need to remember that half hour, 20 minutes before we serve it to sort out an accompaniment. And that's dinner sorted. I'm going to go clean up. Morning. It's pretty early. After a Sunday anyway. It's 10 to 8. Uh, so, uh, it's not all that light outside yet. I mean, it's, it's light. It's just not sun's not fully, fully brightening up um, the world. Um, sun comes up a little after seven at the minute, around about half seven, I think. Um, so it's not been up for long. It is quite cloudy out there. So yeah, Sunday. So I'll open my advent calendar. And then tell you what I'm planning to get on with today. Okay, so day four, the box this time, to see if the camera focuses on it once I've opened it. Russell, 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 Russell. My uh, 
new camera and phone's got this like cinematic mode, which is why I've got the haziness in the background. So I'm playing around with that. But I don't know if it'll focus on things other than like, me um, or whichever person I've got it aimed at. We'll see. Okay. So that's it's on unwrapped and it's a nice blue box with a little clasp on there. Ooh. It's a bauble. Oh, we get focuses if I put it in front of me. So yeah, Christmassy bauble with penguins on. Now that's cute. I'll find somewhere to put that. Um, it's not the same colour scheme as I normally put on my tree. But that doesn't mean I can't find somewhere to put it. You don't have to put all your baubles on your tree. Um, and that's nice. It's got a little box to keep it safe. I'll pop that away. Now my stepmum, I don't know if she still does this. I haven't asked her in a few years. But she always used to get a new Christmas decoration every year. So her tree had all these different decorations and with memories attached. So that was quite that's quite a lovely way to do it, I think, if you're gonna be updating your tree all the time. Um my brother in law he has a thing about penguins. So that's uh, a few connections with this one. Yeah, it's a hand painted glass bauble. Uh penguin by Emma Ball. So uh, if you're interested in some more de new decorations, look at Emma Ball, glass baubles. I do have some glass baubles on the tree, so I'm not opposed to glass ornaments. Um, Kiki, the cat that we lost, she used to really sort of play at the tree and bat at uh, baubles and what have you. Um, so we didn't put the glass ones up whilst we had them. And we didn't put them up when they were kittens because they were kittens and they were running around all over the place and we didn't know what they would do with the tree. Um, yeah, Kiki was certainly interested in the tree. We thought, well, we'll brave it this year because Leo's not as interested in the tree. He has nibbled at a few of the lower branches, but he's not really that interested in decorations that much. And I don't put the glass ones on the bottom branches. Uh, neither of our cats has ever attempted to climb the tree. So, uh, so that's good. So, yeah, so I shall tuck that away somewhere safe. The box is going to protect it quite a lot. But, uh, and we'll think about where to put it. Growing up, we always had all the colours in the living room for Christmas. Quite a chaotic tree um, with all sorts of decorations. Some of the decorations I have on my tree are decorations that I had grow that were on the tree when I was growing up. And we also had ones that uh, my sister and I had made would go on there as well, or ones that we'd picked up. So there were some very childlike ones some more grown up ones, and then lots of tinsel and what have you. I'm not a big fan of tinsel though. Um, but the dining room was always blue and silver. Um, so I have a th colour theme for my tree, mostly because the first tree I bought came with decorations and uh, they were all gold. So I've added in red and I've added in white. I quite like the Scandi style of stuff. Not that all, all of my Scandi decorations have gone on this year because the glass ball balls have taken up a bit of space. Uh, what some of the Scandi ones, some of my elves are on. Um, to, yeah, so I do red, white and gold. So it's cohesive. Um, but the beaded star that I made last year is white, gold and green. Um, see, I'm sure I'll find somewhere for that bauble. I don't have a separate dining room at the moment, so having a room with a different colour theme is a bit tricky. I may just have to have more trees next year. We'll see. Okay, so plans for the day. I'm gonna have my coffee, do my uh, Gems of War on the Xbox. That's something I do every day. Um, and my partner and I have been playing it for years. Um, and yeah, every day we go on and do this little puzzle thing. Um, we're on the same in the same team, same clan, uh, or guild they call them, um, and yeah, it's, it's it's a nice way to sort of wake your brain up a bit for the day. Uh, so we do that. I'm going to put the cake in the oven. 
put the dinner in the slow cooker. This today it's chili max. So I'm not going to show you how to do that because hey, everybody can make chili. Uh, so the recipe I came up with on I came, I found online. Um, so I use it's an American recipe, so I use that as my base. But I have to have to tweak it a bit because some of the stuff we just don't get in the UK, or at least not easily. Um, so make the chili, and then about twenty minutes, half an hour before you want to serve it, you stick in some macaroni, and it becomes chili mac. Um, but yeah, I think everybody is capable of making chili. If you don't know how to make chili, find a recipe with the with the meat or the meat substitute that you like. Uh, so that'll be going for for most of the day. Um, and I'm going to also put together the bits that I've filmed so far for Vlogmas and see how long it is once it's all edited together. Um, then I can decide whether or not I've got enough for this video to go up or whether I want to include another day or two. Um, Mondays and Tuesdays I, I work, so there'll be less footage on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, and Christmas Day is on a Sunday this year. So if I wrap up at the weekends, then that's going to tie in nicely with Christmas. So we'll see. I might have to split up the week leading up to Christmas. Just so that there's something that week for you before Christmas. Um, but we'll see when I get that. We'll see how much footage I've got. I'm pretty much playing it by ear. Um, so if I've got enough footage, if it's a reasonable length, then like not too, too long. Because uh, I know time is an issue this time of year. Um, and I'll put that together and put that up. Um, if it's almost where I want it to be lengthwise, but I can get a little bit more in, then I'll put it up on Wednesday. Um, but you'll know that because you're, you're watching it. Okay, um, I had hoped to cast on my Christmas sweater yesterday when I got the notification that the yarn was with the courier and um, but it's still with courier so um, fingers crossed that'll come maybe today maybe tomorrow I haven't checked my emails yet to see whether it's uh, out for delivery or not it's a bit early anyway for that um so yeah so we'll see if it arrives I'll pop a little clip in and show you okay so I'm back in the kitchen of chaos um I'm just going to make the chilli and uh, then bake the cake. I'm not going to do much footage of putting that stuff together because you've seen it before. Um, but yeah. But, uh, there might be a bit of the cake, we'll see. But yeah, chilli, you know how to make chilli. Protein of some description, spices, sauce. It's fine, you can do that. And then it's going to sit in the slow cooker for most of the day. And uh, just get pasta added to it at the end. Uh, yeah, the cake, well, I'll probably not show much of it mix mixing. I might show a little bit, we'll see. Yeah, but you've seen me make Christmas cake before, so... <laughs> inside and then on the outside I've cut a strip of well I've cut a length of baking parchment longer than the circumference of the tin fold it in half fold it in half again so it's got four layers and I've tied that around the outside that's going to help stop the edges 
catching and burning. I'm also going to be putting a double layer of baking parchment on the top. You can use foil. Um, again, that's just to stop it catching whilst it bakes to protect the mixture. And that's the cake ready. I will try and remember to link to earlier videos where I went through the recipe in more detail, but it's the same recipe. So that's going to bake and I'll uh, catch you in a bit. Okay, yarn delivery. Excuse the rustling while I break it into it. So we have Willow and Lark in Limestone. That's going to be my contrast colour. Let me just uh, hold it there for you. Yep. This is more accurate than that. Um, I will do proper close-ups later. And then we have the same in, it was Midnight, something like that. So it's the same yarn. So the blue is going to be the main colour. The limestone is going to be the contrast colour. It's a DK yarn. So 50 gram balls, 125 metres each. Hopefully I've done my calculations correctly and <laughs> ordered enough. We'll find out. Um, I'm going to be knitting the fabulously festive sweater by Lilla Rilla, which I'll get cast on shortly. Um, hopefully I'll get it done by Christmas. I mean, I will get it done by Christmas. It's whether it's Christmas this year or next. Um, so yes, it's a Christmas sweater pattern in Norwegian. I speak no Norwegian. I have gone through the pattern which, with Google Translate. I think I've got the key points worked out. So between Google Translate, pure numbers, knowledge of uh, knitting patterns, and uh, looking at the photo, hoping to be able to get this sweater knit up without too much hassle. So we'll see how we go. Is it, I haven't knit a DK sweater in a very long time, so I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take me. Um, but obviously you'll be along for the ride. Uh, so yeah, so I'll get that cast on shortly and I'm going to edit everything that I've filmed so far. Um, I mean, it won't be done by the time the cake bakes, but um, I'm going to edit what I've got so far today. And then I'll either upload the past four days for you guys to see tomorrow, which will be Monday the 5th, or I'll put another day or two on there. Um, depends how long it ends up being because I don't obviously want to put up massively long uh, videos for you guys. Uh, apart from anything, it takes a long time to upload when you do it that way. Um, so yeah, so I'll see how much I've got and I'll then give you guys a sense of the length of videos that are going to be coming. I'm hoping about a half hour, maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more, but that's what I'm kind of aiming for to upload each time. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, but obviously you'll know if I've uploaded it for you to see on Monday or not, because you're watching it. So uh, yeah, if I do upload it for Monday viewing, I will see you in the next one. And if I don't, I'll see you in a second.